Hey everyone, thanks for coming over and tuning in again. Um, I just wanted to chat today about um, sleep systems. I'm seeing an awful lot of sleep systems coming up on the forum. It's uh, I don't know what time people will be watching this, but it's it's November now. It's coming into winter, and and sleep systems are becoming more and more discussed. And uh, I just thought I'd throw there the pitfalls and the pros and cons that I have learned. I'm not trying to sell you anything or, or or cause an argument over over sleep systems. It's just what I use and what I learned along the way of building the sleep systems that I have. I know I'll be looking down, it might be a bit of a stoppy starty video because here is my old my old bushcraft journal. It's a Midori I might do a review on on this one of the days. You know you can I've got a little first aid kit in there and you can see here this is my um, bushcraft kit notebook this is the book that I use to build up all my kit that I, I took out you can see here for a trip to the Wicklow Way this is kit I took and stuff that I used didn't use and that's usually how I work it the Midoris are a good one but they're an expensive option they're kind of a bit of bling but I don't use this this one anymore because uh, I'm afraid I damage it, it's too sentimental. So forgive me if I bounce back and forth looking for notes. I want to get as much of what I learned across the use case in regards to the sleep system. So we start off with what you decide to do. If you're a hammocker, that's cool. If you're a tenter, that's cool. If you're you're a bed roller, that's cool. You know, we're all out in the woods to have a good time and enjoy enjoy ourselves. But I'm just gonna try and 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 lay out some of the the pitfalls and some of the stuff that i learned in regards to, to sleep systems in general uh, across the board so the first place i'll start with is where i should have started with instead of going out and buying stuff straight off the bat my very first sleeping bag was a snug pack softy elite i'm a big fan of snug pack i think if uh, uh, they make great bags light bags you know, compressible bags they're, they're fine but the very first camp i went out on i realized that the bag was too small for me, and uh, the, every time I, I tried to zip it up, I could only get the zip up so far, and I, 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 I didn't know um, that bags at the time, in my ignorance, that uh, I thought that you were only buying for length, that they were all kind of a general width. So one thing I'd recommend to do is is n know your measurements. You know, go get a tailor's tape, or or, or um. Uh, use your jacket sizes as, as a rough measurement and always double check individual brands sizing guides because they do vary tamarisk measurements would vary the snug pack measurements the U, u.s surplus measurements would vary to the british army um surplus measurements and if you're buying online which is what most of this market uh, most of the bushcraft market has become it is always handy to know what you are is size wise chest shoulders height and for in regards to sleeping mats, most importantly in regards to sleeping mats, your weight, because um, that that plays a big part in 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 the compression and how comfortable a sleeping mat can be. I have I've gone through a heap of sleeping mats and waking up with sore hips and and stuff like that is is, is never nice. So first thing would be to know your measurements. Now, just for a quick reference, I'm six two. I have I'm I'm a large in a jacket, so that's a forty four to forty six in shoulder width, and I weigh roughly about fifteen stone. So you can kind of if you if those measurements seem about right in regards to you, you can you can see where I've walked it with this. So once you know your measurements, you got to you got to decide what type of camping that that you want to do. Whether you're going to be a bed roller, whether you're going to camp in the winter, whether you're going to camp in the summer. Now, personally, I find that. It's nice to have a bag or a system that works all year round. I, I don't like having loads of different bags, two bag, two season bags, four season bags. I, I just would like I like the one having the one bag. Now I first started off bed rolling because being a broad guy and being a long guy, I, I've broken collarbones in the past and and ribs in the past. That I find that when I spend nights in hammocks, one I used to always wake up cold because of uh, uh, convection and stuff like that back in the early days but I also used to wake up in a lot of pain 
um, across my shoulders and stuff because of how tight the hammock was. If it, if it was too tight, it would hurt myself and it was too loose, I'd, I'd slide down or I'd end up with feet up here and heads up here and headaches and stuff like that. So I, I decided to start bed rolling. It's easier on the bones and and it, it's, I, I, it, it suits me personally. So the first thing that I, I went to look at when when bed rolling was the, 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 the cheap and cheerful Czech Army bed roll. Now the Czech Army bed roll is a nice piece of kit if you're kind of a car camper and stuff like that the, the downfalls i found just let me check my notes the downfalls i found with the with the czech army bedroll was that one it was too small for me now again the start of the video i said my measurements i'm a large so 44 to 46 um 62 and it, it's not only me that had this problem a, a couple of guys had it but at the time it's what it's what suited my budget now the czech army bedroll is fine if you want to use it as a modified under blanket for your hammock but I find that that does away with the point of hammocking because you're carrying like the Czech Army bedroll is a heavy, heavy piece of kit. It's 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 very heavy, and the, you're sacrificing um, an awful lot of weight for very little return in regards to the Czech Army bedroll. But I I got mine, fab sealed it up, and I loved it. I used it for for a good stretch because I, I didn't have the budget and was only learning to tip along. But the one thing I found with the Czech Army bedroll is it's not so adaptable. And then again, these are things I found. Some people, the Czech Army bedroll is all they use, and that's fine. But when I I bought a bigger bag, like a four season bag, and when you, you have the Czech bedroll, and you put your 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 sleeping mat in, and you put your thermal blanket in, and then you put your 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 sleeping bag in, and then your pillow and whatever else you want, one it doesn't zip up over your head. The zips are steel. I'm not a big fan of of of, of steel zips. Um, it, they they kept snagging and they they burst at the bottom. So you can imagine that it, it, there's me, a, a, a large enough kind of guy, and I'm in my Czech Army bedroll. Every time I turn sideways, whew, the zipper would go that way, or any time I tried to stretch my legs out and do stuff, the zipper at the bottom would burst. Now I could have maybe have got a bad one, but it it, it was cheap and cheerful and done. And when it was fab sealed, which is a waterproofer, it it kept the rain off me. But I fell in love with bed rolling after after that. And so I decided to move on and start looking into bivy bikes, different bivy bike systems. So we're going to start from the top down. Here's mine here in the background here. When I first started looking at bivy bikes, the two lessons that I'd learned is always check the sizes and like, like I touched on earlier and always buy big, always buy big. And always test. If you're unsure about your your bivy bag, waterproof it. It's Gore-Tex. The more waterproofing you have, the better. Go with the silicone-based waterproofers like Fab Sil, and you're fine. You won't have any breathing difficulties or, or, or wicking difficulties in the bag that I have found. So the first thing I went to when I was looking for the bivy bags was the, the British Surplus. And the, the British Surplus bags are, are fine, but at the time when I was buying them, the, the pound was and the, the euro I'm based in Ireland, the pound and the euro is just too much of a of a stretch. So I, I started looking to the American market. And the American market the, the, the dollar and the euro at the moment are kinda of neck and neck, but at the time where the, the, the euro was the much stronger currency. If you got friends and family in the States, this stuff is really easy to pick up and find in surplus shops all across the States. So it's 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 a handier handier way to go about it. So the first thing I bought is this, it is the American MMS bivy bag. Um, this thing is massive, absolutely huge. So you, it, most people shouldn't have a problem with fitting inside it. But the reason why I, I like it is one, it has a, you can see here, it comes right the way up and you can zip it clean up over your head. It's got buttons as a backup to the zipper. So if your zipper does burst, you can still close this thing. That's one thing an awful lot of them, um, like the check bed roll was missing. The check bed roll was just a zipper system. And when the zipper burst to me, I had no way of, of baffling it up. You can see here, good quality, big, big button snaps on it. Uh, it's the only camo thing I own, I think, the, the steering carrier camos. But this has never let me down. When I bought it first, a great, way to test your bivy and always I, I can't stress this enough if you're getting into bed rolling is always test your bivy bag just it's it's your last piece of kit and it's going to keep you dry 
and anything that's going to keep you dry you want to make sure it is going to do what it does especially in a climate like Ireland so the first thing I did when I got this off a, off a good friend of mine out of the States is I filled it up with newspaper not, uh, not the entire bag but just the foot area the foot well area and I stood it in the in the basin of the shower and I just I just held the hose on it the whole time just stood there for 15 minutes hosing the whole bag down doing what I had to do opened her up newspaper was bone dry and me being not trusting to any equipment no matter how pricey your equipment is or how good the maker is of your equipment always always try and have it a spot on it don't don't trust gear never trust gear 100 percent. so I, I i got some silicone waterproof sealer and now the water just beads off it and i have no wicking problems so that is my force there and i totally recommend the the mms gore-tex bag or the gore-tex bivy bag it's as cheap as chips. It's about forty dollars, sixty dollars. You know, not including delivery. I, I've never bought one out of out of Europe, so I don't know. I don't know what the European market charges for. But big guy, big bag. It, it's worth its weight in gold to me. Like, plus, what I was touching on earlier. I'll give you a spin around and a tilt down. What I was touching on earlier was, is that the bag is massive, absolutely huge. So not only can I fit in it quite comfortably, but if I had to stuff clothes into it or use use my bag underneath it to support myself, that's what I'd do. Now normally I'd have a debris bed here. Try your best when you're bed rolling, never to put your, because again, this is your last line of defense, never put your baby bag onto the forest floor. If you can help it, the last thing you want is, is holes and rips. Because if you're on a four day hike or a three day hike, and rain starts coming in and you, you ain't got time to build a shelter you can just jump into this and you'll be ready as rain it's it's a nice bit of a bit of emergency kit so the the british army bag i've never tried i've, I've seen lads use it it's a fairly big bag if, if that's the one that's easiest to go it'd be the closest in size and proportion to this one i just prefer this bag it's easier um for me to get stuff out out of america than it is the uk markets so once I had that sorted and was quite happy with it, I decided to, to start looking at sleeping bags. And what I have in here is the Snug Pack Antarctica Ori. Now, I, we all love our kit, we all own a lot of kit, but, but this right here is something that I would never ever part with. It is just absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a, it's a synthetic filled bag. Um, with Prima Loft and and uh, Snug Packs, kind of they've got terminology for all these things. Feel free to go look it up. But either way, it's a fairly, fairly lofty bag, but compresses down to not much, not much smaller or not much bigger than an average sleeping bag. And like I said, mine is forty, and I've I can't say enough good things about it. I've slept in hammocks in minus two with just this. No, no under blanket, no nothing in this, in the, in my regular um, army issue thermals. I've been right as rain. In fact, at certain times too warm. But it's got a front opening zipper here, which is a kind of a must if you're in a hammock. I, I must recommend it, the front opening zippers. One of the main problems I had with hammocks was uh, just getting into the bag. It'd be easier to put an octopus into a bag of oranges. But once I got the front zipper, it kind of changed the hammocking game for me. So it has a front opening zipper and then it has baffles. Baffles everywhere. Baffles around the neck. You got double hoods. Nice big thick hoods. As you can see, you can close this whole thing up around your face, kind of like the Corinthia system. And it, it lofts up really well. It togs up really quick and really fast. Just having a look here. So you can see the tags. That's the Antarctica Ori. I hope you can see it there. Focus, focus, focus. No. But anyway, it is what it is. Don't uh, you can take take my word for it as you can see it's a massive bag. And in the winter what I do is I use this or in the summer what I do is I use this as a kind of a an eider down. I can just put my bivy bag on the ground, I leave the bag open and just use it as I need to use it. It's got uh, a, a ring for her hanging up you should always hang your bags up I, I ruined uh, a sleeping bag from keeping it in a dry sack it's now like a, all the loft is crushed and 
and broken it in and it's, it's like a pancake on the ground now. So I'd recommend hanging it up or even just lying it flat underneath a, a sofa or if you have a, a space like that, just slide your bag underneath it and let it be, let it loft up. Put down the bottom of this bag, I don't know if I'll be able to get it. There we are. You can see here that there's a change in the material. Well, maybe you can, maybe you can, you can hear it. It's a complete change in the material. And you're able to get into this bag with your boots on. You know, so you can, if, if it's extra cold, if it's cold or you've, you've, you've wet your socks or, or whatever, you, it's designed for the military, so you, can, you have to sleep in your boots and if you need to get up and, and take off, you're fine. So you can, if dragging debris from the forest floor in with you and stuff like that isn't going to destroy the bottom of this bag. The one thing I will say is because it has this extra protection around the bottom of it, you, you will get a bit of moisture on the outside of the bag because its wicking properties are a little less down in this area. Now, I have never, ever woken up with wet feet, but I have woken up with the, the end of this bag being a little damp. Oh, there we go. That's my sleeping bag. I tend to avoid down bags. I'm going to try and try one this year, but I just don't like the idea of if they get wet and stuff like that. This is a synthetic bag and, and it, it's easier to dry out and so on. It may not compress down to the size of a down bag, but I don't know. I never have to mess with any of the lofting in this. It's, it's never settled anywhere. I just literally roll it out on the ground and away I go. Again, you can see massive neck baffles. Baffles all over every zipper. It, it is like a cocoon. And that fits with loads of space to spare inside the US um, BB bag. I didn't go with the, the MMS Arctic bag, which is the black bag of the three part system that is the modular sleep system of the American army because it is it is heavy it is a heavy big bag like you know when this one does the job fine on um, pro tip if you don't want to get a brand new branded um snow pack bag or snow pack antarctica um bag you can go online and snow pack make absolutely everything for the british army um whether they still do or not i don't know but they did for a long time and the british army arctic bag is that exact same bag now you can get it in any color you want once it's green it, it may be a bit used but it is the exact same bag for half the money i personally just got lucky one day and the guy was selling that brand new with, with tags for for half of it because it is a, it is a pricey blanket or a pricey a pricey sleeping bag let me see, let me just check my notes because I know I had something else on sleeping bags minus. Yeah, there it is. That, uh, another bit of advice is that these bags don't don't go down to minus 40 and, and you see bags rated down to minus 6 and, and minus 10. That that doesn't mean that you can you can camp out um just walk out into minus 10 weather and hope for the best. you got to deal with convection and stuff like that, the wind blowing across you and tarps, your tarps set up and so on. But what it does, bring it back up here, but what these bags are designed to do, and you can go on and check out, especially the, the anything from the American military, there's usually a promotional video made by the, Ameri the American military about how these things work, but the snug pack bag will not go down to minus 40 just on its own even with clothes they, these systems are designed to work in layers and the snug pack system is designed to work with softies softies um you can buy a pair of snug pack brand new in various colors they're quite pricey but again you can go on to ebay or army surplus shops they sell softies for i think i i have the trousers and the jacket i think i got for for maybe 30 euro and that's how you get these bags down to to really cold temperatures is you know is 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 wearing the the appropriate clothing with the bag so the mms has has things like the wubby and stuff like that for when it gets down to cold the british army and snug pack have softies just just another tip of voice because it, it, an awful lot of people fall out of love with this hobby because they go out and sleep cold or you know they just can't can't get a good night's sleep and they're like no this isn't for me they wake up damp or they wake up cold so I'm, I'm trying to help anybody starting off to to alleviate those problems next on is my pillow this is the seed to summit um i actually can't remember what this is called this was a 
it was a present for me. To me, I think it's the, the thermos or, or, or whatever it may be. But great pillow, very expensive. I'm not saying get it, don't say don't get it. It's just, uh, with my shoulders being the way my collarbones are, I always found the struggle. I slept on kit, you know, people are like, oh, just put your put your spare clothes into a dry sack and blah, blah, blah. But you, you know, you wake up with, with a sweaty face or the, the clothes dissipate, it's just too much hassle. This one is about 30 euro, fits perfectly inside the hood of that it doesn't roll around it doesn't move up and down it's not you don't wake up and it's halfway out the sleeping bag it is it is a nice bit of kit and it compresses down it's got three different valves so you can open this up you can adjust where you want it to be and then it just instantly deflates and this packs up to about just small about half the size of a coke can i personally just leave it in my bag flat i don't like compressing things so i just sit it in like that get one if you want that's cool, personally a, a good pillow is, is nice. Next one I have, the next layer would be a thermal rest. And this is where your measurements and knowing your weight and all comes into play. Because I started out with something like this. This is an inflatable one. And it just, it just can't handle my weight. I wake up with sore shoulders and sore hips, no matter how hard I inflate it. it, it it's not comfortable for someone of my weight or size to sleep on you know it's it's kind of a bit narrow on the shoulders and end up rolling off it and it moved around in the in the bivy bag so i would end up over one half the bivy bag the sleeping mat would end up over the next the best one that i found for for my measurements and my weight was the thermarest there you go it's the thermarest pro leg four now i have some notes on the thermarest stuff it's it's expensive when you go out and you try and buy it from the stores. Now I say expensive, they start from 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 60 euro all the way up to about 300 euro for the, the super light ones that, that can press down to nothing. Personally, if that's your thing, that's cool. I, I, I don't see the point of that. But if you go online and you shop around, if you know your measurements, and you shop around on the second hand pages, Thermarest used to be made in cork, as far as I can remember. And those Thermarest mats are still floating around on the second hand market i personally picked this one up for 40 dollars and, and that was including delivery but although it's it's super thin and it's self-inflating you just need to give it a little puff of air at the end it completely holds my weight in fact it's the, the most comfortable one i have ever ever slept on again i'm 15 stone 62 the length is absolutely fine this is a regular you can get a large which is a little wider in the shoulder it, it's and it's not there's no difference in the length of it some people get confused and buy the large thinking they're going to gain an extra bit of feet down the bottom it's the shoulders that the large um talks about and then there's a half sized one i, I fell into that market where there's a, a the regular and then the small is like a it's like a half size map but go with the full sized one these can press down to nothing it's, it'd be they're, they're a fantastic bit of kit and again i have never no matter what ground i've slept on and they're perfect for hammocking it's it, it's a dual purpose piece of kit that fits perfectly into the dd hammock section underneath it's got insulation it's got silver silver foil on the inside of it so it's also a a reflective blanket great piece of kit widely available on the second hand market it's worth watching out for if you have something that'll do you until then keep an eye out for, for this so that would be my comfort layer and also insulation there the next one down is this guy this is the UST space blanket I find these better than, than than most because it also doubles as a tarp it's got reinforced eyelets it's really strong I've used it. I like multi-purpose items. I've built smokers with, with them, and it's nice that if you're out for a day hike, these fall down to nothing at all. But they're just robust. Now, a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, uses um, the 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 shield you get for your car windscreen in the summer, and I have I have one too in there, and it works it works great. But the foil tends to chip away. Now the UST blanket isn't a grabber space blanket that's what an awful lot of people get confused with but i find that when going to buy crinkly bugger when going to buy the grabber space blanket it is very hard to get one outside of america it is slightly better quality the difference in it isn't isn't much but 
when you want to get it out of out of America, you might find one for say twelve dollars, but most of the shipping I've found has been twenty dollars and up. So all of a sudden you're paying nearly thirty dollars or or, or twenty five thirty euro for for a very small tarp that you're only really going to use in your bedroll and for maybe a bit of protection. But the UST one, you, you can find on eBay. There's English stockists, and I'm sure there's Irish stockists of UST stuff. I, I, I'm not going to rattle them off. But the, they're half the price, and they're exactly the same. They're a little bit noisier. The grabber space blanket isn't that noisy, but it works fine. And that all sits, all this big lump of stuff. Oof. I have my foil man, I have my tamarisk, I have my pillow, I have my snow pack already. And me fits inside that bag comfortably with room to spare. If I wanted to put a wool blanket in, if I, you know, keep clothes down on the side of it for padding or, you know, it, I find that it just works. And I hope that those bits of, of advice help somebody, you know what I mean? Just again, to hammer it home regardless of the kit that I'm I'm using just know your measurements if you're going to go bivy and buy big always test your bivy bag when it comes in as it's your first line of defense from from wet weather especially if things go by the snug pack stuff is also British army stuff so if, if you want to look down that way and you want to, you're looking for a bag the arctic type minus 40 heavy duty winter bags that uh, the, the the British Army surplus is exactly the same gear, and I find no difference in quality between the two. If you're going to go cold camping, get yourself a set of softies. The bags are not designed to go down past minus five without those clothes, you know. So you don't, just don't get caught out on a frosty night and stuff like that. It, it's worth the investment. And again, always check, double check your gear. If it says waterproof on it, never trust it. Always try it out. Always. And do a few kind of day hikes. You know, I, I day hike with an awful lot of this stuff when I buy it first. And I, I go up to the, I might look stone mad, but I go up to my local forest and I sit in it with what I will actually sleep in. And uh, and, and try it out and, and work with it. So it's really, it's really all I can all I can think about it's been a pretty long video but sleep systems are a hard one to cover and I was hoping to answer some people's questions I'd feel free to skip through it if I could annotate it I would but there you go that's that's my sleep system I'd love to see people's sleep systems if uh, if you want to comment in again this is not the perfect system it just works for me something else might work for you but I was just hoping that for people starting out that they might find some advice in here that they could that they could use but thanks very much for watching the and you know, feel free to check out other videos and, and drop me some messages. The Living to Learn channel is, uh, is going good and I'd like to thank everybody for their support. If there's anything you'd, you'd like to see on the channel, feel free to drop me a PM. If you want to upload a video on the channel, feel free to drop me a PM as well. And uh, I look forward to hearing your responses and stuff and I hope this helps somebody. Enjoy the weekend and be safe and have fun.